All right, so we'll start out here, guys, making our image our normal size, right? 10 by 8 and 100. Click OK. And what's the first thing we're going to be drawing in here is our horizon line. So we could do this a couple different ways. I could take my line tool and holding the shift button to lock it at a horizontal, I could do this. Okay. Um, I'm not going to do that quite right now. Instead, what I'm going to do is take this rectangular marquee tool here, right? And I'm going to draw a big rectangle like this. And on a new layer, I'm going to fill this in. We're going to use a gradient just like we did with our other sphere project. Okay, so we're going to go from light to dark. And let's get a darker color here. Okay, so our gradient, let's change this one to foreground to background. Okay, something like this. And we, we'll add our texture in and do the perspective thing, uh, but we'll do it later. So I really, we just wanted this horizontal line, right? So this is going to be our horizon line. And we need to, our vanishing points. So our vanishing points are going to be, I mean, they're just going to be right on the corners here, right? But we don't really need to draw these in. Oops. Because we know it's going to be at this point where this horizontal line meets the edge here, right? I'll put a little dot there just to help remind us, I guess. So let's do that on a different layer, right? Let's make a new layer. Let's call this finishing point. So let's put VP. Oh, switch to the crazy brush. All right, there and over here. Okay, I'm going to lock this layer so that I don't accidentally move it around. That way, if for some reason something does get moved, I'll be able to line it up again with my little dots there. Okay. And I'm going to start, now on the chalkboard we started drawing this vertical line straight up and down, which we can still do. I'm going to use the polygon lasso tool over here. Okay. And I'm going to start down here. And to make it perfectly straight, again, I'm going to hold the shift button, okay? Shift, click, and then it's going to, this line, I'm going to draw this all at once, right? This whole shape here. So it's going to go to our vanishing point. So I'm going to click here, and then I would come back down here. But if I double click, it goes back to our starting point. So when I double click, it'll automatically go straight back there. And now on a new layer. We're going to fill this in with another color here. Um, we probably should use a gradient of some sort as well. Mm, let's make this kind of a red color. And a little bit darker. And why is it being weird with that? And then a little bit lighter. Okay. And it's going to be. Uh, the sun's going to be coming on the other side. Our shadow's going to be coming out towards us. So this is going to be darker than the top, right? And darker than this, a little bit less dark than the other side there. So something like this, or maybe even darker at the bottom, right, as it kind of comes up. Kind of like that. It doesn't need to be perfect, but we want to get the idea. And then I'm going to draw the other side of this thing, except I'm going to kind of chop this off first. It's going to take this rectangular marquee tool because it makes a perfectly vertical line here on the edge, right? So I'm going to figure out how big I want this thing. How about like this? And make sure we're on the right layer. I'm just going to delete it. Let's deselect it. So here's our one side of our object here. And I'm just going to do the same thing to the other side. However, for this one, I'm going to start in the corner and instead of 
I'm not going to try to stop right on this edge and go straight down because it's going to be tricky and I might leave a little gap, like a one pixel space in between there or something. So I'm going to come obviously right through it and then I'm going to go down here and again I'm going to just double click at the bottom of this. So this is a little tricky. Do you go down here or do you stop here, right? Uh, I don't know. Let's just double click right here and see what it does. Okay, so it did that. We probably won't notice that. And on a new layer, again, I'm going to fill this in with the same gradient, except I'm going to make it a little bit darker. You know what? Let's do it this way instead. I'm going to make this gradient like this. And then I can deselect it. And let's do adjust color, hue saturation. And I'm just going to use this lightness slider and make it a little bit darker. Okay, when I put this one underneath that layer, okay, it's going to hide that crooked edge that we made. And it's going to ensure, though, because they're overlapping, that there's no gaps in between there which is why we chose to do that. All right, we're gonna do the same thing over this side. Just gonna delete. And, all right, now we're gonna do our the top sides this way, right? So I'm gonna, again, start here. I'm gonna click up here and even for the same reason I didn't do it last time, but this is even worse because it's a diagonal. I'm not going to try to draw this like this because you can see the spaces in there where the little stairs look like they're, looks like they're stairs anyway. Uh, all those little pixels. Uh, it's hard to know exactly where this is going to draw the line and I don't want to leave all those light colored blocks in between. So I'm going to click it here and then Again, make sure I'm inside and then go back to the start up here, coming down like this. And let's make another new layer. And we're going to fill this in. I want this to be lighter. Let's keep the same gradient though. And it's going to be darker kind of at the back and lighter at the front where the light's coming from. I'm going to deselect this. And I'm going to make this lighter this way, kind of like that. All right, so if we put this underneath the other ones, right, this should look okay now. I've got that under there and that hidden under there. And there's no spaces in here. So now we've just got to kind of cut off that other section. So I'm going to start on my vanishing point and Again, there's no need to stop exactly right here. I'm going to come all the way through the side where that corner is going to be. And then erase that part. All right, so here's our cube. And that was the easy part, I think. So now we're going to draw our shadow. And let's use some black lines here. We're going to identify our sun or our light source. Okay. Now the lower, if you've ever been to like a beach on a sunset, like when the sun's going down or any place where the sunset is setting, really, you may have noticed the shadows get really long as opposed to in the middle of the day, like in the afternoon, when the sun is up high over our heads, the shadows are really small around our feet, right? So, and we'll see sort of how that happens here. The lower I put my light source, the longer the shadow is going to be. It's going to run off the bottom of this paper or the, our canvas here, okay? Which is okay because we can fix that, which we will try to do. So, but the higher we put it, the shorter it's going to be. I'm going to kind of go somewhere over like this. Here, let's say this is our light source. And now if we remember, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line from our light source to the top three corners of our object. Okay, so one like this, 
and just fit on there we go. One like this. And one like this. And then we're gonna draw a line straight down, hold the shift button. And where it intersects with our horizon line here, this is gonna be the van our other vanishing point just for our shadows. And we're gonna draw a line through the bottom here like this, this bottom corner, this bottom corner. And we can see here these lines are not meeting. It shoots right off the bottom of the page here. So we'll fix that in a second. And this one is gonna go just off the edge as well. All right, so we need to make our canvas bigger. Now we've done this before. Image, some of you, or with some of you have done this before. Resize our image size. And when we do that, we're gonna be able to change the pixel dimensions, resample it to change the resolution, and everything like that. That's not what we want to do. If we change that, we'll have the exact same problem, but we'll just have a different resolution file. Okay, what we want to do is resize our canvas, which is kind of like our imaginary paper or canvas that we're drawing on. And okay, so we want it to be higher. Right now it's eight inches tall, right? We need to add at least one more inch, I'm gonna guess. Uh, but we can add, let's add a few extra just to make sure because we don't have to do it again. So let's make this 13 inches. And I don't think it needs to be any wider, but let's make it 9 just for, or 10, just for the sake of it here. And so before we click OK, uh, if we think about it, we're telling the computer we want our canvas to be bigger. Okay. It's obvious to us that we want the space down here because this our whole reason for doing this is to create extra space at the bottom. The, the computer obviously has no idea about our problem here. So we have to tell our computer, you gotta remember, anytime you're doing anything on a computer, computers are extremely stupid and they do exactly what you tell them without thinking whatsoever. So we want to tell the computer to anchor all of our images that we've got so far in the top right so that all of our new space will be created over here like this. Okay? And we'll click OK and we should see that we've got space on the bottom and on our left side now. Okay. So we've got a problem. This no longer fits in here. It looks a little bit silly. Uh, we can't move it like this. Why can't we just move this over here? Because if we remember, here's our vanishing points. Our vanishing points need to be on the horizon line or else our drawing is wrong. And so to leave it there, I think the easiest thing to do instead of redrawing it is if we just stretch this out in this direction and down like this. Okay, we're good. And we can see here that these lines didn't quite meet up here. Uh, let's get rid of this one. And that one's pretty close, I think, for uh, this demo anyway. All right, but let's redraw. We need to redraw this other one for sure from here. Now, this is the point going from our light source, if it helps to think of this, our light source is up in the sky. We're going to draw the lines from the high point through the top corners, right? Our top point goes through the top corners. Our bottom point here, the shadow vanishing point, goes through the bottom corners, okay? So this is going to go through there. Oh, we just barely got that one. Okay, so this will allow us to figure out, let's... Extend this a little bit like that. There we go. Yeah. So, where these two lines intersect, this can get a little, depending on the angle that these lines are coming down, it can get a little confusing as to which lines are supposed to match which other lines. In, in this case, it's pretty obvious. They only intersect way out here, so it's fairly easy to notice. But depending on your drawing, they may not. Okay, so this is going to go like this and like that. 
and then back here. So from here, we're going to fill this in. So I'm going to use this tool. So we're going to make a selection starting from this bottom corner. Remember our shadow comes out, if, if we're standing outside, it comes out of our feet, right? It comes out of the bottom. So we're going to start in the bottom corner here. It's going to come along this line, the vanishing line of our shadow here. Whoops. Uh, sorry. I'm going to zoom around and stuff here with this. It doesn't work so well. Okay, so I think you guys can see though. From there to here, down to here, here, and I get, I always get a few people that do this. They'll bring this line up here. Uh, okay, and that doesn't make any sense, right? It's got to come up from the bottom part. This is where this cube is touching the ground, right here. And again, I'm not going to try to draw this and then out and around. Just go through it to make sure that there's no spaces. And we're going to put it underneath, right? Uh, okay, so we've got all these shapes here. We want our new layer way down here. So I'm going to put a new layer down there. And we'll use our, our old trick. For our shadows, we'll go black to transparent. And we want this to shoot out like this, kind of. We'll deselect that. And let's turn these lines off so we can see what we've done. Okay, not so bad. Uh, let's blur the edges. So for this one, we're going to go blur. And if we forget which one, the Gaussian blur here, the one that looks like the word doesn't make any sense to you, that's the one to use. And we don't want to blur it like crazy because we went to a lot of trouble to figure out exactly where the edge of the shadow should be. We've got a really bright, small light source. It's going to give us a fairly <coughs> defined shadow to show that you did it properly. I mean, if it's like this, we could have just randomly guessed this and nobody would know the difference. Okay, don't hand that in. You're going to miss lots of marks. Okay. So we just want the edges to soften a little bit, but we definitely want to see the shape that we figured out. Okay, and it should line up with, with our lines pretty closely still, right? Which it does. Um, and when you hand this in, by the way, leave all these lines on. Another way you could have done this is maybe you decided to set your cube up like this. You could have drawn it like this first, right? We could have gone like this, like this, and like this. Oh, you know what I did. This is why, this is actually why it's a good point, reason to actually mark our vanishing point. There it is right there. I just went to the edge of our document because that's where I first started it. But as you can see, this is not going to line up anymore. Which is why, the other reason why earlier I said we can't just move our horizon line like that because it's not going to make any sense. Okay, here's our vanishing point here. And if you don't know where the vanishing point is, you can find it just by starting the other way around. Wherever this line hits the horizon line, that's where the vanishing point should be. And if all the other ones don't make sense with it, then you did something wrong. Right? Okay, so as long as these two points are on our horizon line, you're good. It doesn't matter that this is not at the edge anymore because of the way we ended up uh, having that issue there that we were fixed. All right, and the last thing we're going to do is make some clouds. Render clouds. Oh, there we go. And we're going to do our uh, transform perspective. And if some of you still maybe didn't get this right, after you've done that, really important that we bring this up so that we can see the compressed space there and it's not covered up by the ground. Okay, and then our ground, we're going to add in a Let's just see what this one does. Noise, add noise. Let's try different. There we go. And then we'll do our perspective again. T 
to get our it looks like a weird flower wild flower field or something but okay so when you hand it in leave all these lines turned on uh, I can see immediately that this is done correctly all of the lines match up I can see exactly where the vanishing points are on the line on our horizon line 100% easy okay everybody should be able to get 100% I think looks like this you can use a different texture is the idea right is that we've got large texture small texture okay large clouds small clouds um, our cube we want to make sure the top is going to be the lightest side because it's facing the Sun right and these sides are gonna be darker the side facing furthest away from the Sun is gonna be the darkest side if you're not sure which one it is it doesn't really matter you just got to pick one to help define this edge the shape right because I mean this might seem obvious but if we draw this thing and then the only thing I mean the only thing that makes it look three-dimensional is the fact that it's uh, diff these different values right if we just fill in with one solid color it looks like a big block okay you need to have the shadows to make it look three-dimensional okay